There is something that I find super interesting in the elementary STEM space. Oftentimes, we are given these amazing spaces and we are tasked to do amazing and innovative things with our students, but we are given zero curriculum and zero budget to do so. And don't get me wrong, you can do a lot of awesome stuff with recyclable materials, but you definitely want to level up when it comes to those amazing resources that we want our kids to get their hands on. And I know that you are filling it too. A little while back, over 70 of you filled out my podcast survey, and thank you so much for doing that. I got a lot of great insight as to what you're feeling right now and what you're needing and to help me plan future episodes just like this one. And there was a common theme when it comes to gathering materials in your space and how this is definitely a struggle for you. Some of you even said that there is an issue with the budget, gathering materials, planning activities that won't break the bank, and very little resources and materials. I completely understand, and that's why you are definitely going to love today's expert, Jennifer Mahan. We have been chatting over the years over on Instagram, and I noticed that she was getting a lot of awesome supplies through grant writing. In fact, over the years, she has gotten funded over $32,000 worth of supplies in combined grant writing to build up the space for her students. Yes, you heard that right, $32,000. Not all at once, but just a bunch over time. She was a lot like you. She was given a brand new classroom with zero curriculum and zero tools to do these amazing things in STEM. So she took upon herself all of this awesome grant writing. Jennifer Mahan is a K-5 STEM teacher and technology integration specialist at East Elementary School in Kansas. Jennifer is an MIE expert, a flip trainer, a Pear Deck coach, and an Ozobot certified educator. Jennifer is also a blogger who is passionate about rural education and the importance of STEM and computer science in the K-5 classroom. You're going to get a lot of information in this episode when it comes to gathering materials for your space and some tips and tricks when it comes to grant writing. I hope after today's episode that you feel inspired and that you can start writing grants for your space so that you can gather those awesome supplies that you know that you want your students to get their hands on and really have them be a 22nd century learner. I can't wait for you to listen. Welcome to the Elementary STEM Coach Podcast, a show that'll help you with lesson ideas, systems, and actionable tips to apply to your classroom. I am your host, Naomi Meredith, a former classroom teacher turned current STEM teacher and coach. With over a decade of experience teaching and a master's degree in STEM leadership, I am here to coach you throughout the year to help you gain back more time to create innovative experiences for your students. Grab your earbuds and let's get started. Well, thank you so much, Jennifer, for being here. Okay, this topic that you're going to talk about, I'm so excited about because before we hit record, you said a lot of people ask you about this question, and a lot of people ask me this question, and I know that you would be the perfect person for this um, when it comes to getting supplies for your classroom and writing grants. I've done a few over the years, but I know that you have a lot more experience, and I know it's really hard when... We as STEM teachers are creating a program pretty much from nothing. It's pretty rare. Everything's handed to us. And we want to are expected to do, do all this cool stuff. And then we don't have stuff to do the cool stuff. So I'm really excited to hear all about that today. But before we jump into that, if you wouldn't mind telling us about yourself, your teaching background, and then how you stepped into your role as a STEM teacher. Yes. So my name is Jennifer Mahan. Um, you can find me on social media, Genosaurus Tech. I feel like that's usually what I'm known by, but my name's actually Jennifer. Um, <laughs> I am in my 10th year of education, my fourth year of teaching STEM. Prior to that, I taught fifth grade math and social studies for three years. Um, and I also taught special ed for three years, two years, uh, severe profound disabilities, sixth through ninth grade, and then one year of just second through fifth grade special ed. I honestly never pictured myself as a STEM teacher. Me neither. Like, I, 
I don't even know. Like looking back from when I started teaching to where I am now, I'm like, how did I get here? Mm-hmm. <laughs> but I, I loved integrating meaningful technology into what I was teaching. And I went to tech conferences and things like that. And I kept learning about STEM and learning about computer science. And as a fifth grade teacher, I started integrating coding into my math curriculum. And my social studies was so boring. <laughs> um, like if you don't know fifth grade social studies, it is like up to, I believe, the 1800s. Oh, that's good. It's, it's, it's like nothing, nothing fun. So what I did is I started integrating STEM into that and trying to make it more hands-on, more fun, and just getting that cross-curriculum in there. And that's kind of what got me interested in STEM. And I was also getting my master's in instructional technology. So it was like all of these things happening at once. And that's how I ended up here as a STEM teacher. I feel like our stories are very similar. And I think we've talked about this over the years because, yeah, I was also – I did not know you taught special ed. I had no mm-hmm. idea. That's a, But that's super important too. I mean, teaching all the kids in the school, you have all the needs, all the IEPs that we still have to meet. So that's actually a really valuable experience in your STEM role. So I think a lot of – actually, I think that's actually really common with a lot of STEM teachers listening where, oh, we like technology. We like STEM. All right. I think I'm qualified to be the STEM teacher kind of how it goes. (laughs) That's how it was for me for sure. So don't know how I'm still qualified, but here we are. (laughs) I love that. So when you stepped into your space, was there a STEM program before or was this something brand new to your building and our district? So I'm really like the only STEM program in our district. Uh, Now we have a little bit for sixth grade, but like there's not much in our high school, literally at all. Whoa. It's, it's, it blows my mind. Like we have such a huge maker space and a STEM program here in our elementary. So like not to barely have it. And we have it in sixth grade, but not beyond that. It's like mind blown. Oh no, (laughs) that's sad. I know. I know. I've been helping and working with that teacher to write some grants and get that Mm -hmm. going. Um, But so I, when I was teaching fifth grade math and social studies, you know, it, it kind of all started in a few different ways. We had a keyboarding teacher and wow. kids, that was one of the specials. They would go to keyboarding like twice a week. And that's literally all they did was keyboarding in those 30 minutes. Hmm. So at the time, I knew I wanted to start integrating more like STEM based stuff. So I also knew there was potential to be a, that a STEM program could be coming with tech integration So that's kind of like, I wrote a grant (laughs) in hopes that I would, this would be a position we were creating. Um, And if we weren't going to create it, I was just going to be this fifth grade teacher with like the coolest STEM stuff that everyone (laughs) wanted. So it definitely, like we had nothing. And I'm from a small rural school district. Like, you know, we have 250 kids in our preschool through fifth grade. Whoa. Like our town is so small. Like I live in a town of 297 people. (laughs) What? town I Yeah, the town I teach in is probably like, I don't know, I would say like 1800. So again, not a lot of people. Oh, wow. So we did not have money for this program. So I was kind of like thrown into this program with literally nothing. I think Mm -hmm. they gave me like a stapler. And, nice and like the keyboard covers, but I mean oh. it, there was there was like <laughs> the keyboard nothing. covers. <laughs> yeah, there was like nothing except for maybe what I brought from fifth grade and teaching special ed. But like I had I had nothing to start a STEM program. Oh my <laughs> gosh! And I think that's very common. Sadly, yeah. that's so true. It's like, hello, welcome to your job, but you don't have curriculum. Nothing. Or and you money. Have less, yeah, you have and less no of supplies. a budget. Yeah, you have <laughs> to teach all the children. With your imagination. I don't know. It's like pulling out of the Barney bag. Like, what's in it today? You know that song? (laughs) It's so accurate, though, because it's like you're being thrown in. And and that's, I think, when people talk to me, it's like, how did you do what you've done? Because so often we're thrown into this position with minimal STEM experience. And Mm -hmm. it's like, make magic happen with, here's $250. But now you teach every (laughs) single kid and not just like 40. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah, you're like, good luck. Uh, okay, thank you. Like $200 can barely buy one Lego education kit. It can't <laughs> anymore. And prices went up. They have gone up. That's true. <laughs> so that's why I asked you to be on here because you have stuff now. And so what successes have you had with writing grants over the years? So it's your fourth year in STEM. Mm-hmm. I know you have a lot of stuff now. So 
what things have you been able to purchase? And you can even just start from the beginning, kind of the process of what you've done, because it's really awesome what you've done. Yeah. So that May, I wrote a grant for $5,000. Um, like, yeah, if I get this STEM program, $5,000, I'm going to, it's going to be awesome. And then I got $5,000 and I'm like, what? Oh. what? I, need, like, I need more. I mean, $5,000 didn't even cover what I wanted or needed or thought I needed. Um, yeah. And then, so that would have been May, August, I wrote another one for $5,500. And luckily I was awarded both of those. And then yeah. after that, I kind of kept writing grants, but I learned the hard way that, you know, I didn't always get them Okay, and I didn't always maybe research enough of what I ordered. So then I'd get some things and I'm like, Ugh. looking oh, back, no. <laughs> I wouldn't have ordered those things. But, you know, as a new STEM yeah. teacher, I didn't know what I would need or I didn't know what would like how, okay, those kids I started with in kindergarten four years ago are now probably smarter than I am mm -hmm. <laughs> and I need to push them. Yeah. That makes sense to, yeah, because, yep, that's another thing. I don't know what I need. What were some things you regretted purchasing? We're not throwing any companies <laughs> under the bus, but you're like, oh, this, this wasn't great. <laughs> so, well, I have like Lego Essential, Lego Prime, uh, We Do 2.0, Brick Key Motion. I love all of those. Yeah. But in the beginning, I ordered the Lego Boost robot. Um, oh, and I don't know that one. It's, it's a great robot if you're yeah. like a child at home. Um, oh. it's not really lesson based as much as it is like coding, super fun to build, but it wasn't conducive for our space. Like it took way too long to build. Oh, <laughs> I see. It, yeah. Yeah. And the other one that I wouldn't purchase again, um, would be, I think they're like Jim U robots. Oh, I don't even know they're, what that is. They're really neat. I went to a tech conference and they were like, oh, these are great. And I was like, oh, they're great. <laughs> but at the time, they didn't have like a curriculum or a way to save student progress and things like that. And for me, that was important. Mm -hmm. And uh, I also wouldn't order things with 9,000 batteries again. Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah, like, that I makes mean, sense. But I also think it's hard. I think like as a new STEM teacher, you see STEM teachers who have a lot of followers and a lot of people who – um kind of promote things. So I saw some things that teachers were promoting. I'm like, oh my gosh, I need that. And then I realized afterwards, I think it was an ad and not something, you know what I mean? They're actually using. So I have like uh, these little critter robots, which I wouldn't uh, order again. Well, I've seen those. Okay. Well, that's good to know. So the reason I wouldn't order them again is because, you know, your bee bots, your robot mouse, they all turn on like an angle. The critters go for like a wide turn around town. Oh, that's and it's yeah. it's so different than what you are teaching and coding and things like that. So definitely research things before you purchase it. And if you see someone cool sharing it, doesn't mean you need it. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> I know. And I'm very I think I've talked about on here very picky about specific things that I'll buy because I've had the same thing happen. Like, oh, why did I buy that? Or there were things that were kind of left over in my classroom that were cool, but they were for older children. So like I had things that were made for like middle school kids that were left in my classroom. Like I tried, I tried with like a GT class. They couldn't even do it. I'm like, this isn't, I can't use this. <laughs> like it was so bad and I donate them to our middle school, but I think that's good to keep in mind. Yeah. You definitely want to research. So when you wrote the grants, did you have to list out what you were going to buy? And like, how did you find these grants? Because that's a lot of money to ask for. Like, how yes. did that all work out? So altogether, I've probably been awarded over $30,000 over four years, which is a huge amount of money. But I started our STEM program, I started our makerspace program, and now I've helped our sixth grade kind of get like a STEM once a week thing. I'm trying to help them. I try to help them get it up and going. So at the time, well, I don't want to say at the time, like my husband, he at the time, his role was economic development. Oh. Uh, so he kind of knew some grants to, to like a direction to steer me in. He doesn't do economic development anymore, but I mean, he still helped me with grants. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but where I'm located, we have like, it was called Dane Hansen and it was a local foundation, like a public county community foundation. You know, you have donors choose, you have some like Bayer fund, large STEM grants. There's mm. so many different things like Duclos foundation for me personally. I think 
looking like if I'm giving advice to people, I always tell them, look at what your local community foundation is. Look at what your local groups are, because there's so many groups wanting to give money to education, especially if you're doing technology or STEM or something hands on. Like if you're showing how it's real world connections, people yeah. want to support that. And I will say I def I didn't get all those grants. And that was like heartbreaking. Yeah. I remember I wrote a grant for eight thousand eight hundred dollars. And when you write a grant, like if I want these 15 robotics kits, I have to list every one, like thing okay. by thing. You know, when you're writing grants, it does take time. So when I'm mm-hmm. doing that and I don't get them, I was so upset. <laughs> um but I had to really stop and look like, okay, my first two grants were super easy because I was building a program. Mm, but now when I sense. wanted to do a maker space, it was like, well, you don't need this. So oh. why should we give you the money? So I really had to stop and think, okay, I live in rural Kansas. What sets me above other people that's going to make you want to give me money? Hmm. And for me, it was our fifth graders were going on a STEM-based field trip and they were driving two hours away to Manhattan, Kansas. Oh, um, And no school at the time within probably a 45 minute drive even has a STEM program. Mm. So showing, hey, this is a need, you know, yeah, we're in rural Kansas, but I want our kids to be able to compete with bigger towns. I want them to like make connections with industry here because, you know, you can work remote, you can do so many things. So once I really keyed in like, hey, this is what I want to do. Mm. This is why I want to do it. I'm going to share it with other community members. Like, hey, bring the Girl Scouts, bring the 4-H people, yeah. bring in other schools for free because I'll write a grant for them to come do cool stuff. Like, uh, That's a good idea. When you identify your needs, it definitely plays plays a role in making it work more. Yeah. So instead of saying, I need this stuff, like, here's how it's going to make an impact. Yes, and that, and that, that would be a specific. Yeah. Yeah. Say, and, and for me, it was really tying in. I want my students in rural Kansas to have the same experience as kids in a big district. You know, I don't want them to be held back because of where we're located. Mm-hmm. And I don't think so. Once I really played up that part, yeah, like play it up. And and for me, it was even tying it into our industry. We have a lot of um, like manufacturers here. Like, oh. This is preparing students for the real world. This mm-hmm. is how I can tie in. Um, and even some of those businesses will like donate to schools and donate to certain things like that. So I'm like, hey, I'm writing a grant on how yeah. my kids could work for you in the future. If you want to give me money, I mean, I take it. <laughs> yeah, that, yeah, and they, yeah, like you said, they are looking for connections. Sometimes those companies don't even know how to reach out. Like it's like we're it's opposite. We're scared of them. Like, oh, we don't want to ask. But then the company's like, we don't want to ask. We don't know how to ask. So it's like kind of a two way street. We're, we're just kind of like, I don't know where to start. So when you found the local partners. Did they have grant opportunities already or did you reach out like blind, like on an email, like, hey, I would like to write a grant. Here's what I'm thinking. Or was it kind of a mix? So the the majority of the ones I've done, like Dane Hansen, Do Close, or Public County Community Foundation, they're all local. Um, Dane Hansen's over a larger space in Kansas, but they were all ones that it was like a Republic County is twice a year. Mm. The Dane Hansen's once a month. The do close is like twice a year. So I knew I kind of researched it and found those. Um, Like when I saw the Bayer Fund one, that was maybe like once a year or something. But certain people, like I reach out to them or if it was like some of them, you could just find them. Oh, okay. So Googling. (laughs) Okay. So just like even Googling. That's a good point. Mm -hmm. Um, And yeah, you never know when you ask. Are there, um, do they ever give you like a template that you have to fill out or do you have like a specific format that you use when you write a grant that works. So obviously the storytelling and how it makes an impact. What do you do for that when you actually write it? So for grants, so far everything I've done, it's like you create an account and then it's like specific questions. Like what's your impact and how is this going to impact your community? What are your goals? How are you going to reach your goals? How are you going to tell us if those goals were met? Um, What's like, what makes your air like what how do you stand out more in your area or something like that it was very like a template that they're providing for you mm. and i just had to sell myself in 250 words or less sometimes <laughs> okay okay so that's helpful having that template cuz that's hard to know where to start yes. <laughs> you're like i don't yeah. know what to write and you could probably reuse some of the stuff too if you save it in like a google doc on the side i would totally reuse that <laughs> well so that's what i do for most of them is i type them all out in google doc and then i copy and paste them that way you know a lot of my answers i can reuse 
or even like I have a lot of people who ask me for grant advice and I can mm. be like, hey, here's what I've done. And that way you're not seeing like my school's EIN number. You're not yeah. seeing like our diversity or our, you know, that we're a title one school. So I'm not sharing that with like those specific people or whatever are, yeah. whatever they're trying to find out. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. So for your grants, so you mentioned you did like a maker space one and then mm-hmm. some other things. Well, are there other, like, do you typically do like, I need all this random stuff or now are your grants like, I would like to do something like more focused? Like, is that, how do you format all of that? So my very first, I would say two were building my STEM classroom. Um, after that, it was building my maker space classroom. Mm-hmm. Um, following that one, it was more of like, Hey, this is what we've done. And it's great. And we appreciate you. But now I have these kids who are here and the stuff that I have is like to here. Mm -hmm. So I need something to still push those kids and challenge them. So I kind of just use that approach now, Mm. or it's just been something specific, like this is what we would like. And this is why. Yeah. That's a great way to put it. And that's good too. Like if you already have things, where are, where are your kids going to be? Because I totally agree with you. It's my fifth year in STEM. What my kids are doing now is way more advanced than what they were doing at the beginning. I had fifth graders who could not log into their username and password. They did not know what to do. <laughs> I can relate to that so much. <laughs> yeah. So and now they can do it. I'm like, yes, we can do this. So hooray. But totally different. Like the Lego We Do 2.0 was hard enough for my fifth graders at the time um, because they weren't used to collaborating in that way. Now it'd be like, oh, piece of cake. Like where's, where's the next thing? Where's the next thing? But so important that what you're doing, because like you said, you're, you want them to compete with other schools and Mm -hmm. that's so important. And sometimes we do need some cool stuff to do it. Like I can't do, I mean, yeah, you could do cardboard every lesson. That If that's where you're at, that's where you're at. But it is really nice to have some of the fancy stuff too. Yeah. And especially for me, like in the beginning, you know, I didn't know what I was doing. I didn't make a chart or like a map of my curriculum that first, you know, year no. because it was fine because everyone could use the same thing. But now it's like, okay, first grade has to do this. Second grade, mm-hmm. you know, does this. And then you, it, it definitely dif- has to differentiate more. Yep. And I mean, I have things that I use and I try to find things that I use with all the grade levels, mm-hmm. but that it like breaks it down. Like, I don't know if you have the spike essential. I do. And I just bought more. I love them. I love them. And yeah. I love that they have like 20 lessons for yes. first grade. 20 lessons for second grade, some that are third through fifth, like that, they know what they're doing with that kit because you can use it with so many grades. And I mean, I love the Lego we do, but it's so, I feel like it's so much more advanced now because you're using it with more grade levels and it's challenging or easy and it's, I love it. Yeah. So look at, yeah, (laughs) I agree. Totally get that kit. People don't believe me. I'm like, no, it's like Mm multi-grade. Like it it really actually is like how I'm like, I don't know. They just like really thought through this. It's like, yeah. And and it's all standard based. Like, and it's not just literacy and computer science, but it's also like, I think it's NGSS Mm -hmm. science too, which is great because then you can get that buy-in from other grade levels and other teachers like, Hey, I'm doing this for a purpose. (laughs) Oh yeah. You're like, we're not just free building. It's actually, this like, We're really actually doing something. So that's good to keep in mind too when you're writing your grants, like finding things that can be used for more than one grade. Has that helped you in your grant writing? I'm sure like it can be used for this grade, blah, blah, blah. Yes. I think I think my grant writing from year one has evolved so much now. Like I still will do like donors choose and some of those things, um, or even like a local one every now and then. But in the beginning, I was asking for like five to eight thousand dollars every time. Now I'm like, can I just get like a thousand dollars? I know it's not a lot. Or, you yeah. know, I'm asking for more of like a specific, like I just got the spike essential at the beginning of this mm-hmm. year. So which the price went up and they were kind of expensive, yep. but it's like, I just needed something new to add. Yep. So probably for me, I'm at the point where if I just add one thing new every year, I'm mm-hmm. going to be happy. I mean, I don't have yeah. to, but I really like to. I know. And there are new things that come out and we want the kids to kind of experience that too. Not kind of, we want them to experience yes. that too. So it is important to kind of just keep your eye out of not every bright and shiny item. Like you said, like not everything's good. There are some staples that you really want, but yeah, with the upgrade, we know Lego education kits are good. And so this upgrade is worth it. So just kind of being mindful and talking to STEM teacher friends and podcasts or whatever, and doing all that. 
and save money for storage containers because you never think of that. You need storage uh, containers for all of the stuff you're about to start to buy. Yeah. And you're going to be like, where do I store this? I don't have a container. And go for the expensive ones because they're better. Yes, they are better. <laughs> don't cheat out. Dollar Tree containers don't work well. Oh, they break. No, no, they do. <laughs> that is really good advice, actually. <laughs> Speaking of advice, so you have went through the process. Is there anything else, like kind of like a checklist, like, what you should do when you're writing your grant and like things you would recommend. So one thing that I have learned is things that work across grade levels, definitely minimum batteries or at least a rechargeable battery, align it to other standards. So teachers don't think you're just playing. And the last one's probably my favorite. I look for things with replacement pieces for free, like Osmo is fabulous. So we do that a lot. Um, or like teachers use it in stations, but if you, if something like breaks for them, they replace it for free. Hmm. Um, and that's fabulous. Cause when you're investing in some of this stuff, like I, I don't want the spare pieces. I don't want to spend 50 bucks to no. replace something that just breaks in wear and tear or like snap circuits. Sometimes they'll replace pieces, things like that. So I would say definitely look into replacement parts or like what's the replacement plan is mm. for education before you purchase it. Cause that, I mean, that helps me sway a little bit. Like if you're, if you have good customer service and you're going to support educators, I'm yeah. going to give you my money. <laughs> That's a really good point. Like the longevity of a tool. I would never have thought about that. Like that you could, do you write that in your grant? Like I know that they have this replacement plan. Do I you have. Okay. Mm -hmm. Like when I was doing um, 3D printing, I kind of put in there, you know, I'm choosing this 3D printer because it has someone who does every single, I think it was every single, every single Thursday, they'll do like a two hour Zoom. And if you hop on, you hop on and they'll help you. And if not, hey. but for me, who had no knowledge of 3D printing or how to fix them. And obviously, I, I have, we've yeah. chatted about 3D printing before. I thought you um, built your printer. Didn't you build it? I had it? to build them. Yes. Yeah, I thought they you didn't come assembled. <laughs> <laughs> Who knew? So I had to build these three massive 3D printers, like had no idea what I was doing and then making them work. Mm -hmm. I mean, I knew how to print, but I did not know how to uh, assemble, fix, do all of <laughs> no. the things. No. <laughs> So that's important. Like find you a company who can help you when you're stuck. Like if you send them an email and they don't respond to you, nope, move on to a new company. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, it's true. We're like, that's something people don't think about in this role is you're not trained to do anything. And there's all these different products that some have support and some don't. And so we're responsible of learning how to use that tool. So yeah. that is great to add to your grant. Like I will buy this because they have support. My 3D printers came with teacher training. I love um, that for you. <laughs> I can't remember. I did not have to build them. I remember watching you like on Instagram like, oh no. Are you like you brought them home? Huge. Yeah, because I brought them home because I was like, I don't even understand these directions. <laughs> yeah. It's like ultimate Ikea. You're like, oh no. It's like yeah. AP Ikea building. <laughs> but what was so great though is like later on when I had issues with them, which were issues that I just didn't know how to like fix or I put something together wrong. They, they were like, if it's a time – because the Thursday time didn't end up working for me sometimes. Mm. They're like, we'll meet with your kids. We would Aww. actually love to train your kids to Aww. fix this for you so you don't have to. They're like, so let's meet with your kids. Let's do this. And I'm like, yes. Oh, did it work? <laughs> yeah. I mean, they met with my kids once and helped me fix it. And then after that, it was more of me like logging on in summer trying to just do some stuff like that. But it was nice having them meet with my kids and trying to fix it with them and troubleshooting. Like talk about the skills they learned from that. <laughs> mm hmm. Yeah, and that's like st – that's real STEM, actually. It's like we're yeah. fixing the 3D printer. <laughs> that's that's real-life learning. Add that in the grant. Mm -hmm. Like if it breaks, the children will learn how to fix it. Yeah. <laughs> and if they don't, then they have to stay with me another year. But anyway, <laughs> uh, anything else that I missed when it comes to grant writing or anything else you want to share? Because I think this is so, so insightful and also encouraging – that you have done this. You are a teacher. You have done this and it has worked. <laughs> Thank you. I just think the biggest thing is like, you're not going to get every grant and that's okay, but don't get discouraged because, you know, I got two and then I didn't get two. I got three and then I didn't get one. You know what I mean? Like definitely identify your need and you have to prove why you need this, why it's important. So identify your need and just don't give up. Like you're mm -hmm. not going to get, like in STEM, STEM yeah. is going to work the first time, but <laughs> 
keep trying. <laughs> yeah, I think that's great. That is super great advice. And probably like it sounds like to spread your wings. Don't do just mm-hmm. one. Put your feelers out there for multiple because you and never reach know. Reach out to other STEM teachers on social media because they're going to help you. Like I, that's, that's a question. Like you said, you get a lot. I get a lot. I get emails about it all the time. And, you know, I think that's what's great about STEM teachers is we're so willing to help. Mm-hmm. And we want, like, we want to tell you what works and what doesn't work because we went through it and, like, learn from our failures. Yep. Yep. A hundred percent. Yes. Maybe don't get a printer you can build. No, I'm just kidding. Maybe yeah. it worked out. It worked out. <laughs> and don't get the Jimmy robots. Yeah, don't get those. What did, <laughs> something, I don't know what I've bought that was bad. I'm sure I'll think about it. I have bought some bad stuff. Oh, you know what I did? I did a grant for uh, video production tools. So I bought tripods super cool, all this other stuff. And I added in like costume props because I had a vision like ki- the little kids could be like community helpers in the videos. <laughs> but like the costumes were so tiny. They're like for a two-year-old. And like nobody can wear them. It's super awkward and like weird stuff. I was like, why did I put that in there? This is so dumb. <laughs> I love that. I'm glad I'm not alone, but I think mine was more expensive. <laughs> uh, I don't know. Those costumes are expensive. I think they're in my closet. I'm like these are, they, they make me mad every time I look at them. <laughs> but yet you have to leave them there because obviously you got them. So yeah. you have to look at them and think about that when you, you know, request like, for money next time. <laughs> yeah, I'm like, maybe if I teach pre-K STEM, they can wear it. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> but good luck with pre-K STEM if you teach it. <laughs> yeah, we'll see. I don't know. Maybe. <laughs> Um, well, I appreciate your time and all your knowledge and I'm sure people will use, you mentioned your handle at the beginning, but, um, where can people find and connect with you? Yeah. So definitely I am on Twitter, Instagram, you know, I think my wakelet's the same. It's all Genosaurus tech, very responsive. And I like to help others because, you know, people have helped me along the way. So reach out, find me there or, you know, Genosaurus tech at gmail.com. I am available. (laughs) And she's super helpful. We've chat over the years. So we have. Yeah. She yeah, she's great. I'm so (laughs) glad. And she's knowledgeable knowledgeable about a lot of other things too. So um, definitely check out her stuff. Yeah. Well, thank you so much again. And I appreciate your time. And hopefully everybody's grant writing is way better off now. (laughs) Yes. Thank you so much for having me. It was fun. Thank you so much for listening to today's episode of the Elementary STEM Coach Podcast. I would love to connect with you over on Instagram at Naomi Meredith underscore or send me an email to elementary STEM Coach Podcast at gmail.com. Also, make sure to check out my website, Naomi Meredith.com, to see all the show notes from today's episode and shop my K-5 STEM resources. Any questions you have, needs for resources, or ideas for episodes, get in touch. I'll talk to you soon.